Okay, last but not least, we have the second exercise for today. And the second exercise for today is not so bad. In fact, it's covered in the lecture. So in this particular exercise, you're going to answer three lovely questions. And you're going to put them in a Word document, just the same thing we did actually for the first one. But this one's not based on any reading that you have to do, so that's why I say this one's a little bit easier. What are you going to do here? You're going to say, are reflective actions such as flinching from a hot stove rational? So remember the hot, cold example I was giving you. Is that really rational in terms of the behavior? Are they also intelligent? So what you want to do is think about, well, what is it? And I kind of gave you the scenario already, actually. It's not rational, in my opinion. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I said earlier for those of you who missed it and weren't paying attention, were sleeping. I said it's just a memory. I said it's just a piece of data that you stored, and that's not rational behavior. And you could teach a computer this. Because if you exposed a computer, let's say, for example, you had a computer that could sense heat, and it was able to get the stimuli to compare it against a saved instance of an exposure to heat, it could come back and say, logically, this is hot. And if it's hot, don't touch it. And we can teach a computer to do that. So does it, the question here says, though, is it a reflex action? Is it rational? Well, then you have to think, well, what is rational versus irrational? And do humans actually think rationally? I say, well, no, humans don't really think rationally for the most part, because if we thought rationally, we'd think logically. So depending upon your definition of rational behavior, which you sort of have to think about, because everyone actually has sort of, and there's no universal description. You could say that, yeah, this is rational, because the sensory reception and the stored data that's associated with a heat and hotness could fall into that. Is it, are they intelligent? No. I said earlier, they're not intelligent. I still believe they're, it's not intelligent behavior, especially if you can take, take it rationally. So then you have to think, well, then why do humans, you know, you see this at birthday parties all the time with kids. They know it's hot. Yet they'll lick their finger and they'll put it over the candles until they get burned <laughs> because they think they can defy and it's irrational behavior. Why do people like to what, mat, light matches or, you know, stand close to a cliff? Or because they think they're defying gravity or they think they're defying their, and they're not being rational. So if you use that sort of as the stimuli in terms of, you know, is this rational behavior, then think about reflexes. Reflexes are kind of rational. If I were answering this question, my philosophy would be, yeah, they're, I think they're rational, they're not intelligent. They're human responses, they're reflexes. If someone were to yell at me, I'd go, huh, it's startled. That's a reflex. And that's not intelligence that's telling me to do that. But to computers, can you do it? You know, that's a separate question whether computers can do that. So anyway, that's what I want you to do. That's the kind of thinking. I didn't give you an answer one way or the other, and I contradicted myself a couple of times because on purpose because I don't want you to copy my answers. What I want you to do is think for yourself what that means. And then also to what extent, that, so that's question number one. Question number two, you want to think about, to what extent are the following computer systems instances of artificial intelligence? A supermarket barcode scanner. Is that really intelligent? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. What about a web search engine? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. It's an information agent. You can call it an information agent. Don't worry about putting labels on stuff, however. Because probably by the end of the weekend, you're going to start putting labels on stuff. Because then you can know, well, that's this kind of agent. Well, that's that kind of agent. That's rational. That's irrational. That's logical. That's not logical. You know, then you can start defining your own world. Internet routing algorithms that respond dynamically to the state of the network could be semi-intelligent, actually, in my opinion. So, Various subfields. Okay, so that's question number two. This is why I say it's pretty easy. You can whip this out in a half hour or less. Uh, Various subfields of AI have held contests by defining the standard tasks and solving researchers' uh, standard tasks and involving researchers to do their best at solving this problem. Examples include the DARPA, the Grand Challenge, the DARPA project by the government to create those little robot things. International planning competition, the Robot Cup, the Robot Soccer League, I don't know, all this other stuff here. Investigate five of these contests. How are you going to find that? Well, you're going to use your artificially intelligent search engine to 
do an information, you're going you're gonna to send your information agent out on the internet to do some surfing. And you're going to come back with five contests and describe the process made over the years. Most of these contests are still in existence, by the way. <laughs> They've been around for centuries. To what degree have the contests advanced the state of the art of AI? So if you want, actually just put in the word robot. And you're going to see robot contests. We have fighting robots. We have mechanical manufacturing robots. We have intelligent robots. We have dumb robots, worker bee robots, task-oriented robots. You'll probably find five of them. I don't want to. I don't want to diatribe on each one of them. Just give me a couple sentences and say, "Hey, this is what I found. It's been going on for five years, and uh, now they have them that uh, now this robot makes pizza." You know, or something. You know, now this robot does this or that. And uh, do uh, what degree do they hurt the field of drawing energy away from new ideas? Because once someone invents something, this is the phenomena that we get with robots. Once a product comes out, people go, "Oh, we don't need it anymore." It's kind of like what's happening with smartphones right now. Actually, who's going to compete with Apple? Who's going to compete with Google? Well, Windows is still trying. <laughs> BlackBerry's fallen off the face of the earth, but. Windows is still trying. So. so just give me your opinion on number one, number two, and number three. It's opinion, 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 which means it's not coming from anything but you, hopefully. So, All right, let me end this video so we can talk about serious stuff, like what time we're going to get out.